Moin ihr wunderbare Menschen des Interwebs, ich begrüße euch ganz herzlich zurück zu meinem Let's Play von The Great Ace Journey Chronicles. Wir sind hier bei unserem Herrn Shamespear stehen geblieben und hören uns einmal an, was er so zu sagen hat. The snow lay about, my neighbor that cometh in the evening bearing a gift of tea. But merry, bitter was his drink, and when he left I did fall prostrate on my table. It was the tea alone that passed my lips that late hour, naught else. I was outside this bloke's window in the freezing cold all night, keeping an eye on his room. No one else visited his room but that short little round-backed eastern fellow. Warum war der die ganze Nacht vor seinem Fenster? Was? Warum? Wait, what did you say? You were keeping an eye on Mr. Shamespear's room all night? That's right. Of course, the bloke's window is all but blocked up, isn't it? But there's a little gap in the bricks where you can see into the room. So I spent the night trying to keep my teeth from chattering as I peered in through that. The question is, sir, why? It would be well now, that's because he's on my list. What a piece of work is a man, wherefore wouldn't thou not stare in wonderment? What are you talking about? This buzzing bu busy body hath not part in this play. Ich muss bei so wie er, also natürlich ist das die alte Sprache, in, die er sp in, in der er spricht, ähm, aber in Final Fantasy, ähm, das Spiel habe ich ja auch immer nur auf Englisch gespielt und, ähm, Uriangje, ein Charakter, den ich sehr, sehr gerne mag. Er spricht genauso. Deswegen fällt es mir ein wenig leichter, ähm, das vorzulesen, weil ich das schon kenne. Das kenne ich schon. Die, die Sprachversion kenne ich schon seit Jahren. I pray thee, pay him no heed. Make no more ado about his tedious words. What, what did you say about me? Calm yourself, this card is concerned with what happened on the night in question, nothing more. Indeed, that is so. And as the testimony we have just heard clearly reveals, there was no one other than the accused present at the time who could have carried out this crime. Well, I believe this may be the final testimony of the trial. Now, counsel, the defense may proceed with the cross-examination. Yes, my lord. Das Problem ist, dass ich da aber nicht wirklich viel äh, zum Angreifen gesehen habe, also, oder zumindest zum Präsentieren gesehen habe. Ich habe da jetzt nicht wirklich ein, ein Widerspruch gesehen, deswegen würde ich sagen, wir greifen einfach alles einmal an. To be clear, by neighbor, you are referring to the defendant, Mr. Natsuma. Ich liebe diesen Koala Bear. Ich finde ihn so gut. Oh, indeed, sire. Perchance, thou wouldst that I call him the man from upstairs. And at what time did the most fashioned Nipponese visit you in your room? Our meeting was promised for the hour of nine, and lo, did he come to tender a gift of fragrant tea. Details which are in accordance with the defendant's own testimony, yes. And we were broiled in such a literary debate as history hath been not seen before. By which I presume he means there a discussion about who was the stronger, Romeo or Juliet. I, Shamespear, did play the part of young Romeo whilst my neighbor played the fair Juliet. Each of us dressed as would our characters be to bring weight upon our merry experiment. I dare not, e not imagine the scene. Royalty, thy name is woman. And thou imagine how dismayed I was. Yes, I had heard of the eastern art of jujitsu, but... Neither did I dream dreamed it would be a skill practiced by the comely maiden. Comely maiden. Julia beat Romeo up? This is not helping our case. I believe the court has heard enough about your earth-shattering literary debate. Perhaps you could reiterate your statement about the tea that the accused brought to your room. My liege, I am thy servant. Gladly I would do thy bidding. 
Das Ach ja. Ich mag das Charakterdesign Charakter übrigens von ihm. Let me stop you there. The Senatsuma left your room at 11 o'clock, but it wasn't until after 2 that the poison made you collapse. That amounts to more than 3 hours of missing time. If the defendant had really put the poison into your tea, that 3 hour window of time is something you're going to have to explain. Gladly, this is an easy task. I did drink of the tea, not while my guest did tarry, but after he took leave of me. Faith, it was stone cold, but at one hour post midnight, verily, were my lips parched. Um, aber das passt doch nicht zu... oder? Moment, Moment, Moment. The tea cups used by Mr. James and Mr. Natsuma. There is no, no tea ring on the inside of Mr. Natsuma's cup. Okay, doch, das stimmt. Um, Okay, ja, sein Tee war länger in der Tasse. That doesn't sound normal. Nay, this quite ordinary, sire. After all, though wouldn't recall our fiery debate, amidst such argument there'd be no time for fiery tea. Romeo and Juliet again, and who was stronger? Mr. Shakespeare, in summary, allow me to confirm, did you not come here with the intention of naming your attacker? But of course, my, my leash. Was the stooped lover of words did attempt to shuffle me of this mortal coil? We all know what that means. It was the tea alone that passed my lips that late hour, naught else. Oh, Moment. Natürlich noch, ähm, angreifen. So, you didn't have any kind of evening meal, dinner, supper... Ah, fire on luxury, fire on gluttony, to eat thrice daily is but a waste of time. Sorry. I wouldn't, I would that my belly were full no more of than the sun doth rise. Well, most heroic eating habits, I must say. Night and day do I fill my hours with learned study of the great bard and playwright. Hence, is it that there doth not an, in me, in my chamber, be then the costumes of mine art? That would appear to be the case, as even a rodent was found starved to death in your room. When I think of it, it's not just food that was conspicuously missing from that room, is it? I don't recall seeing a single player script anywhere. For I have devoured them all. You have eaten them? Every word be within my skull. Didst thou imagine otherwise? Right, that wasn't misleading at all. Now, could you turn around, do you think? Which brings us to the conclusion that the only way the poison could have passed the victim's lips is in the tea. But the windows of that house have all been filled in. The historical artifact of the now defunct window attacks. Yeah, you are right there, all bricked up horribly. But as it happens, there is a little part of the brickwork at the bottom corner that's been opened up. I was looking in through that gap. Yes, there were a few bricks loose, weren't there? For some strange reason, a couple of bars of soap lined up on the latch outside as well. I don't like going around poking my chin in other people's business, especially on freezing cold nights. But them's my my orders, so that's what I will keep doing as long as there is breath in my body. What's with all the theatricals today? Out of interest, Mr. Miedemran, after the accused had left and returned to his own lodgings, did you see the victim leave the room at all? No, he never left. He was in that room the whole time, as far as I'm concerned. And we can therefore discount the possibility of suicide. How can you be sure of that? The police carried out a software investigation of the scene and found no recept receptacle for, po for the poison. And since we know the victim didn't leave his room and hence didn't dispose of the poison's container himself... It's clear that this was no attempted suicide, only the culprit could have removed the receptive. 
Ich habe das Wort falsch gelesen, weil, weil ich zu früh wieder gedrückt habe. Los, it will explain, Council. Thank you. Ich habe das Wort gerade nicht richtig vorgelesen. It really was. You can't argue with the logic. You say a short little round backed eastern fella. So you can be sure it was the defendant then. Ich habe immer noch das Problem, dass ich manchmal einfach zu schnell weiterdrücke, weil ich mir sicher bin, okay, ich kann, ich habe den Satz äh, verstanden und kann ihn vorlesen und dann struggle ich dann doch wieder bei einem Wort. How many other short little round back Nippenese with a mustache do you think there are in London? Well, of course, it's only a narrow gap and it was quite dark, so I didn't notice the mustache, but he showed up at the wrong line, so I'm pretty sure of myself. And when the person you saw arrived, did he and Mr. Shamespeare drink tea together? No, sorry, I couldn't say. Why not? Because I couldn't see into the room all that well, could I? But what I did see was the silhouette of that little round backed fellow wearing a pretty dress. Then a pair of them started some kind of wrestling match. I tell you, I didn't know what to make of it. Ich hätte das mit das davon gerne ein Bild. I suppose that was the Romeo and Juliet Championship battle getting underway. Mr. Meterman, allow me to confirm one final time. Apart from the accused, can you state with certainty that no one else visited the victim on the night in question? No question. My lord. Uh, goodness me, yes, Mr. Foreman. I've kept my mouth shut and listened up to now. But this has gone on long enough. Are you all with me? Are we to understand that you ladies and gentlemen of the jury are in agreement with one another? That you've reached a uh, anonymous decision? Too right, we have. Are you all with me? W wait, no, the defense is in the middle of a cross-examination. To be honest, I was holding out a bit of hope for you, young man. Especially after you identified those few hours that followed the accused leaving the victim's room. Yes, the three missing hours, as you put it. But in the end, what difference do they make? None, as far as I can see. And since that's now apparent, there's really no reason to delay our decision any longer. Like I was saying before, if I don't take Five Bob home with me tonight, the missus will blow her top. What's that? Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. Very well, let the court be apprised of your decisions. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will state your leanings as to the defendant's culpa culpability. Yuzai! 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 Ja, es wird mal wieder Zeit für eine Summation Examination. Well, it would appear that the jury is indeed anonymous. An 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 ich muss das Wort einmal, ich muss einmal die Aussprache googeln. So, this time at least, it seems justice will be done. All's well, that ends well, as, as they say. This calls for a toast, I feel. To the guilty being punished. Mr. Naruhoro, please. The trial isn't over yet. What do you mean, Ms. Suzato? What about the information I found in this encyclopedia, encyc encyclopedia of British law I have? That obscure right that belongs to the defense in these situations, remember? Summation, examination. Yes, that's right. We don't have a jury in Japanese courts, of course. But here in the British Court of Law, if we can reverse the decisions of a majority of the jurors, we can force the trial to continue. This trial can't end now. Whatever it takes, I just can't let that happen. 
The defense moves to invoke its right to a summation examination, lord, my lord. Why am I not surprised that my learned Nipponese friend's inability to admit defeat? You choose to clinch desperately to some archaic rule you barely comprehend instead of accepting the truth. Certainly no other defense counselor in recent times has exercised the right to a summation examination because they all know that once the jury's mind is set, it cannot be altered. Nevertheless, the right remains and must be upheld. The defense counsel's request is granted. This court will proceed with a summation examination as outlined in the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia of British Law. Thank you, my lord. Are you and your fellows prepared, Mr. Foreman? Believe me, my lord, we all we know all about this young lad's tennis tenacity, and we are ready for it. Very well. In that case, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby call upon each of you to state the grounds upon which you find the defendant guilty of the crime for which he stands accused. The victim may not be well off, but he's a nobleman and straight up, there's no reason to doubt the man. Well, I do declare the good gentleman has no reason to lie. In fact, I think he's rather splendid. Just look at the accused by comparison. He's Japanese, stoops all the while, and has a mustache. Very fishy. There's no evidence to suggest the gangling actor is a fraudsman, for now at least. I really don't care, like, I just need to start to end quickly. Three hours of missing time is nothing when you reach my age, you know, nothing at all. I knew it. Every single one of them seems completely convinced. It would seem that all the jurors have come to the conclusion that Mr. Shamespear is a fine, upstanding and honest citizen. If you ask me, they've all been bewitched by his strange theatrical movements. And sadly, nothing Mr. Natsume has said appears to have registered at all. Well, here goes. Let's not forget. I have pleaded with the jury on Sasaki-san's behalf before, and it worked, so you never know. Before we begin, it might be an idea for me to remind you exactly how a summation examination works, Mr. Naruhoro. Well, you're still very new to British law, after all. It's true, I suppose, and Sasaki-san's fate is entirely in my hands now, too. There's always a chance I might have forgotten some crucial detail. Perhaps I should hear Susatisan out. I wonder, should I let her talk me through it again or not bother? No need. Thank you for the kind offer, Miss Susato, but I've been through plenty of these summation examinations already now. I think it's important that we don't delay the start any longer than necessary. Of course I understand, and I'm quite sure you're right. If you're confused by anything at any point, you can turn to me for advice whenever you like. I will be here for you. The key to this is really listening carefully to each juror's statement. Finding two that are contradictory and pitting the corresponding jurors against each other. Without further ado, please, counsel, proceed with the summation examination. Yes, my lord. The defense's rebuttal. Okay, so the victim may not be well off, but he's a nobleman and straight up. There is no reason to doubt the man. Well, there are plenty of people in London who seem noble but poor. Couldn't some of them also be liars? I have no doubt about it. Like that shaky client of yours, for example. Absolutely not. Mr. Natsum is no liar. Look, the point is, the only thing that passed the victim's lips that night was the Japanese man's tea. When you take the gas man's testimony into account as well, the truth couldn't be any clearer. Well, that's alarmingly logical. But let me be frank here, I'm a gentleman, with a gentleman's values. If it turns out that the old shakes beer in jump is a rotten liar after all, I would be glad to change my decision about the defendant. And I'm sure my fellow gentlemen on the jury would do the same, isn't it right? Well, um, yeah, perhaps, though I don't s don't see it happening. What's that elderly gent on the end here, you know? We'll have to speak up. Look, I really don't care about all this nonsense, I just need this try to be over. 
How many gentlemen do we actually have on the jury then? Alright sir, I may hold you to that, don't forget what she said. Okay, alright, if you can show me that the victim's a liar, I will reconsider my position. Are you saying you believe the man to be trustworthy because he's rather splendid? No, that's not what I said. The point is, the man is the victim here. What reason would he have to lie? And yes, he is rather splendid. So you say, yet again. Meanwhile, the man who sends accused behaves so suspiciously, it's exhausting to look at him. I am afraid he's not splendid at all. Splendid logic there, madam. Thank you so much. No, 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 not, not one of those things is a reason to find the man guilty. But he is fishy, there is no point dancing around the fact. He's Japanese, he has a mustache and he suits. You see, you arrive at the conclusion in just three steps. Three steps, like a waltz, in fact. You know, the more I think about it, the more this thread seems like a dance. You seem to be several steps ahead of yourself though, and you are on the wrong foot. No, there is nothing but circum substantial evidence here, there's no actual proof of the defendant's guilt. But the victim's version of events is backed up by what the big chimp man next to him says, isn't it? One, he saw the Japanese man there, two, he saw no one else, and three, he saw the Japanese man there, oh. That's another three steps, all this really does seem more and more like a waltz, doesn't it? Right, and the prosecution will waltz its way to victory if I let you speak much more. A fraudsman? What do you mean by that, madam? This is a most tiresome problem for the company, most irritating. We can be absolutely certain that a customer is stealing from us, but without hard evidence. We can't even threaten to take action for fear of being sued. I'm sorry, you've lost me a little there. Who are you? I'm the wife of Augustus Aldermont, owner of the Aldermont Gas Company. Good gracious, Aldermont Gas, you say? Gas is the future of energy in this country and around the globe, but proper handling is essential. As I'm sure our employee from the East Branch office would be the first to agree. Absolutely, lady. When we gotta be used probably, Aldermont Gas is the best in the world, of course. may have solved the mystery of the bow from earlier, Mr. Naramara. Right, he bowed in, the, in deference to his employer's wife, did he? Yeah, so would it be right in assuming that the reason Mr. Miriman was watching what Mr. Shamesbury was up to in his room? I'm afraid that there is no end to the lengths the population of the East End will go to in order to steal our gas. So I really have no choice when the company identifies somebody as a possible fraudsman, but to dispatch a worker to watch the suspect day and night. We are very so through in our investigations. So you mean Mr. Shamespear is? I wouldn't come out and say it in public, but you can finish the sentence with a grubby little gas thief. You have noticed the public gallery in here, have you? The, the eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen. Have wouldn't thou wound me with thy words, were I to let them penetrate the skin. But seraphs hear no, not insults, only chorus of angels in song. They may not have evidence yet, but my workers won't stop buzzing around you until they find it. And when they do, you will find yourself blasted back to your angelic heights in an alderman gas explosion. So Mr. Shamespeare has been stealing gas. I wonder, Jira number four, if you wouldn't mind adding that information to your statement? My pleasure. Was it the bit about ripping that thief apart you enjoyed? A little before the part about object violence, if it's not too much trouble. Yes, of course. This could be it. This could shift the balance. The victim puts on a fine performance, but in reality he's a common thief of my company's gas. Okay. Dann, glaube ich, haben wir hier jetzt schon mal unsere ersten Jujoren, Jujoren, <lacht> Juroren, die wir clashen können. 
Mein Gott, und zwar Juror Nummer 1 und Nummer 4. Two statements clearly contradict each other. Good gracious. To who, who statements do you refer, Counsel? You're number one. What are you yelling about, lad? I presume you've heard your number four statement, made by the wife of the owner of Aldemon Gas. Well, yes. The victim, who you claim to be a noble, straight-up man, in fact turns out to be a common thief. So the good lady says, but there is no evidence, is there? You and I both heard them say as much. It's true, we don't have evidence as such just yet. But the claims aren't baseless, you know. Heard me, seeing as his operation has already been compromised, suggest that the court hears testimony from our East End branch office employee over there. I will do whatever you say, my lady. Guess when's honor. Juror number one, you say you're a man of your word. If I could show that Mr. Shamespear was a liar, you assured me that you would reconsider your decision about the defendant's guilt. Yes, I did say that. And as a man of honor, I will hold to it, um, as I'm sure the other gentlemen of the jury will. M me? Well, yes. Now that we've found out the man's a liar, perhaps we ought to consider the matter further. Well, if I'm perfectly honest, I haven't heard half of what you've all been saying. So if this means you will recap a few points that would suit me down to the ground... Oh no, I'm not having any part of this. I want to stroll over and done with. In that case, I shall change my leaning. So, Mr. William Shamespear, if that is your real name... You have the jury demand to know exactly what kind of a man you really are. That's four euros, four for not guilty. Yes, Mr. Naruhoro. Victory! Well, this is quite extraordinary, I must say. As a result of the defense, defense's sum, summation examination, the jury's leaning has changed. Now only two jurors say guilty, whilst four say not guilty. I therefore declare this court to be in a state of dis disaccord and order the trial to continue. You have spoiled the bouquet, Mr. Shamespear. The ladies and gentlemen of the jury now find they are unable to trust you, the victim. But you gods will give us some faults who make us men, so God mend me, I do swear. This gas man speaketh that which concerns him most, not but gas, not but thin air. Aye, it burneth bright a while, but it hath no substance, and it doth reek full foul. Oi, what did you say? Do I take it, Mr. Shamespear, that you deny the allegations of gas thievery? Most heartily, my lord, has has thou forgot? I am as a, I am as a seraph, an angel, noble of mind, sweet of nature, and verily honest of heart. You flowery mouthed. Be bold, just cause I haven't got the evidence yet. Mr. Shamespear, if, in fact, you are not noble of mind, sweet of nature, or honest of her heart, if you're a liar, then your testimony should have no sway in this courtroom. It is my considered opinion that at the present time no other possible culprit of this crime has been identified. All testimony heard by the court thus far heavily implicates the, the defendant. In short, it would not be unreasonable at this stage for me to rule on the case. However, in light of the fact that the jury has expressed concern about the fidelity of this witness, I believe it would be inappropriate for this court not to pursue the point further. 
I assure you, my lord, that would be a waste of the court's time. The gas and this case are unrelated. Juror number four. Didn't you say before that also you had no hard evidence to prove this man has been stealing gas? You have strong grounds for suspecting him. That's right, we do. Don't we, huh, worker? Absolutely, Lady Quimby. Gasman's honor. Very well then, we will hear your testimony now. You will tell the court precisely why you believe the victim Mr. William Shakespeare has been stealing gas. Yes, my lord, it will be my pleasure. On the Alderman gas name, I swear. If I may, my lord. Go ahead, madam. This worker's testimony may have a significant bearing on the good name of my husband's company. Therefore, I should like to take the stand alongside him in a su supervisory role, if you wouldn't mind. Sweet as honey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Very well, as an exception, I shall honor your request. Thank you, my lord. You wait till the boss gives you an earful. Oh, it's gonna sting you, mark my words. So, you will both testify before the court on the subject of the illegal consumption of the Aldermont Gas Company's fuel. Yes, is that clear, my good man? Clearest Alderman Gas, my lady, which is the clearest in the world? Do you think the gas has gone to his head, Miss Suzato? I think the man is just a very dedicated employee, Mr. Naruhoro. <laughs> okay. The Alderman Gas Company's investigation. Gut, aber bevor wir uns diese Aussage anhören, gibt es hier wieder einen Cut. Ich bedanke mich ganz herzlich fürs Zusehen, hoffe ihr hattet Spaß und wenn ihr mögt, sehen wir uns sehr, sehr gerne im nächsten Part wieder. Bis dahin, ciao!